Hello, hey, welcome to Tie with the K. I can't believe I'm saying these words, but today we will be listening to Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the musical. I learned about this musical for the first time, I think around December of last year. I don't really know anything about it going into it, at least in terms of like the songs, like the melodies or anything like that, but I do know that um, it has some like Broadway talent that I know the names of, like Norbert Leo Butts or Son Foster. I'm pretty sure it was a musical beforehand, but now, um, they actually released like a soundtrack for that musical so yeah i'm excited to listen to it i i don't know what to expect and i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to stall any longer i'm just really intrigued and let's get to it <laughs> all right i finished it um first i'm going to go through like general notes and then i'll go through like each song because i wrote a note i think at least one for each song i may want to have the song list next to me for that though I'll do that in a bit. Um, but yes, it started the exact same, I'm pretty sure, as how the book started and how the movie started. First of all, this is not a diary. Um, it may not have been exactly at the beginning, actually. I think there's like a course or something that just said diary, 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 and then he said, hold up, this is not a diary. But like the intent was the same. So that was cool. Um, something that I usually do when I listen to musicals is I look at the Wikipedia page and see like what's happening in the scenes between the songs, especially when it's a musical that I haven't heard music from before, but I just didn't do it because I know the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. If you don't know by now, I actually made a video all about Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I read every single book in the series and it is out now. Um, be sure to watch it. It's like an hour and 43 minutes. Um, I know there is a new one coming out called Hot Mess in October. I just couldn't wait for that, but um, maybe I'll make a video when that comes out. But um, yeah, so I know the Diary of Wimpy Kids series um, and like the story between it. And I think this only focuses on the first book anyway, but yeah, um, I didn't really need the Wikipedia and I also just didn't want to, so I didn't. Um, now I need now I need the song list, track list. Be right back. All right, so I did not use Wikipedia, but I did use another resource outside of the actual songs, um, which was Genius Lyrics. It saved me multiple times for multiple songs. Um, but yeah, it, it's a site, you probably know what it is. It's a, it's a site that um, writes down the lyrics of songs, and sometimes it even like gives explanation between them. I think anyone can, like, can write their opinion in it. It's kind of like Wikipedia in that regard. But um, yeah, okay. So let's start with Overture, um, yeah, the ensemble says Diary, 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 Diary of Wimpy Kid. Then Greg's, wait, 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 first of all, let me get something straight, this is Journal Mom Diary. Don't worry, I won't be doing lyrics for every single song. I appreciate that they actually had like a little kid to be Greg, especially in TV, that is something that's rare these days, like actual high school students playing um, high school parts, playing people in high school. Um, one thing that is exception, I'm doing another shameless plug here, Degrassi, which is one of my favorite TV shows, and they, like every single, or at least in the earlier seasons, the actors played people in their same grade and their same age, which is pretty cool. I don't know what I was really expecting, but I guess with me going in knowing that like people like Norbert Leo Butts and um, Son Foster were in it, I kind of thought that they would play like the main roles, but I think they actually play respectfully um, Greg's father and mother. So yeah. Um, that being said, like that doesn't that means that their voices aren't like as mature. So like some of the voices, honestly, is kind of critical. Like especially Greg's, it didn't really like. It didn't sound perfect. I didn't really like, I guess, his tone, but um, it was fine. He was cast, so it's not really for me to judge. Um, especially in the first track, the middle of it all, I, I heard, I thought that Roderick sounded pretty quiet. He does have a song later, like his own song, which I'll talk about a little later, um, which I could hear him, but yeah, he was kind of quiet from the get-go. And um, so the overture is like only a few seconds where Greg is kind of just like introducing himself, and then the second song called The Middle of It All, Part 1, he introduces us to his family, um, and it's called The Middle of It All because he is the middle child of his family. Um, Roderick is his older sister, brother, and um, I was going to say frankly, and Manny is his younger brother, so yeah, he's in the middle. And I thought that would be like the main focus of the musical, how he feels being the middle child and trying to stand out or whatever. Um, I guess you could argue it is about him standing out, but not like as part of the family. Like we don't really spend that much time with like the family dynamic. There like isn't a specific song where it's like only the family. I, um, yeah. So yes. All right. 
I don't know if I'll do timestamps, but um, now I'm going to go into The Cheese Touch, which is the third song. I thought it was kind of funny how it started off with, Stop, boy. Back away from that cheese. Stop, boy. I haven't heard that ever, I don't think. And it kind of gave me the vibes of, um, I think it's the Chokey Chance from Matilda the Musical. This was, this was okay. I like the chorus. You got the cheese touch or something like that. Um, but yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, that was fine. Still, I haven't heard like a song that like I love or anything. Then we got the Manol Vidal Part Two. This is one of those musicals that have like multiple reprises. I think there are three in all. There's Part One, Part Two, and then Part Three, which is actually the finale of the whole entire musical of the Manol Vidal. So yeah, um, there's a quote that I did write down, which was, um, "I will not give up yet because it's just day one." But boy, oh boy, I'm having a great one. Which Cool. So at this point of the musical, um, the middle of it all, part two, I wasn't really feeling Greg being mean, which I was kind of worried about. Not mean, but like selfish. Like he wasn't, he wasn't all about himself. Just even in his voice, I just heard a little child and I, like people think that little children are innocent. Um, I guess I wouldn't say that Greg isn't innocent, but yeah, he's very like self-obsessed, especially in the movie. I think that that's portrayed the best. Um, but, um, at least at this point of the musical, I wasn't like, I wasn't feeling that. I just thought he was just a little kid. Another big part of Diary of Wimpy Kid is like how funny it is. Um, and I was not really, I didn't think it was that funny, at least at this point. Then we have Josh, he says, which is our introduction, or I guess middle of it all part two is our introduction to Rowley. What's interesting is that Rowley seems kind of like just like a person that Greg knows more than his best friend. And Greg even feels like embarrassed one later in the musical when Rowley calls him his best friend. But um, yeah, in the book and movie, I feel like they are like, they're really only friends. They're really, Rowley's like the only friend that Greg really has. Well, in this, he's like, he's just this kid I know that I'm kind of embarrassed by. I thought it was funny when Robbie said, peanut, you're just peanut butter and jealous that I, that I found him because you didn't discover him. And he's talking about Joshy, of course. This was the first one, which I didn't like, which I didn't mind. The ones before were like, okay, but like, I don't know. This one I was kind of getting into, and I think a big part of that is because of um, the person that plays Riley. I think his voice is good, and um, I guess the, the best voice that I had heard up to this point while listening to it. <laughs> And yeah, Rowley is definitely, like, arguably my favorite character. And I'm only saying arguably because that's a lie. My favorite character is definitely Patty Farrell. And I think I mentioned it in my Diary of a Movie Kid um, book video. Because she's just so funny. And I, I really like the next song, Better Than Better Than You. Um, which is, like, about her rivalry, her rivalry between Greg and her. So yeah, that was good. That was, I think, one of my favorite songs, for sure. And then we have You're Changing, which is sung by Greg's dad, who I think is Norbert Leo Butts. I thought it was kind of funny, like, dad, the dad being kind of, like, uncomfy talking about his, like, his child's, like, body changing, like, puberty and all that. Um, but, like, I don't know, the melody wasn't, like, I can't really remember it, but I do remember really liking the backing track, so. Um, and there's also a quote, soon, s lyric, son, you'll be alright, or not, good luck with changing. And that's, like, the last, that's the last lyric, so. Okay, then all about the mom box, maybe my least favorite song. It's just it's it's kinda it's kinda like Hamilton, at least they're rapping and I I don't I don't I didn't like that one. I didn't like that one. So yeah. And then we have Animal Hearts, which is I think actual actually a title of a Joshi song in the like Diary of a Big Wimpy Kid universe, so it was cool to hear that. I didn't mind it, it was cool, like it was it wasn't like a standout, but it did kinda sound like um a song that I'd hear on the radio, kind of, so I liked that part of it. And there was a lyric, My heart is full of love and punctuality. Just funny how, like, Rowley likes him so much, but, like, all of his songs are kind of, like, there's, like, an edge of, like, respect your parents and follow your dreams. Like, it's, like, they're good messages, but, like, it just, it's not, I guess, lyrics that you'd hear in, like, a lot of pop songs. I said that the end of Animal Heart was funny. Let me, how did that, I think they just repeated the same thing again and again. Animal heart for you, animal heart, animal heart. <laughs> and Greg said it's still going. So yeah, it kind of gave me a vibe of um, a song, No Control, from SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants the musical, um, where like the the ending repeats a few times, but this ended this ending repeated a lot of times. So yeah. Okay, and then I liked Safety Patrol, although while I'm filming this now, I don't really remember how it sounded like. I'll definitely have to give this a re-listen, but um, yeah. 
that's those are all that's the only note that I had <laughs> on Zaydu Patrol that it was good. Um, so yeah, a lot of these songs are actually pretty short, like two minutes or something. They definitely vary. Um, I can actually check right now. The longest song was um was only four minutes and two seconds in the shortest song. Overture was forty four seconds, followed by um. He made it, which was 135. So yeah, pretty short songs. None of them, yeah, none of them were longer than four minutes. And the uh, four minutes, two seconds, and the long, and the the entirety of it is. Um, I don't want to do that math. I can do it while editing. We'll fix it in post. I'll show it right now. So yes, and then next song is doing my thing for some reason I actually thought that it was gonna be another the middle of it all reprise I guess because he's talking about like um, what he mentioned in the middle of it all but um yeah he was not being nice to to rally so yeah nah we don't condone that okay then the next song was Roderick Rules which was Roderick's big number and I really like that one it was fun I'm gonna have to listen to it again I had like some um like modulations which was cool Fregley's song was also really good. It was another earworm, and I like that his mom was featured as well. So yeah, that was that was nice. Oh, I think Jesse Mueller, who um, who was in the Waitress musical, that's where I know her from. She is Fregley's mom, so that's cool. I did not recognize her voice, but it does say it in Genius that she she is his mom. And then we got Dear Diary, which is kind of boring. I this may be my least favorite song, after of course. Mom books. I thought it would be like a mom number, but it wasn't. Um, hold on, am I missing a song? Is it a genius lyric? Sorry, no, I, I skipped way down. Sorry, 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 sorry. Doing my thing, I didn't like because of because he was mean to um because he was mean to Ravi. He made it. I I think this is just like when he when it's announced that he got the the comic. He he got the placement to like write the comics in the school board, so in the school newspaper. I just I don't really remember, and I guess I didn't write any notes for that. Um, Do the right thing, Greg, is the the number that is sung by Son Foster, who plays his mom, who I know from playing Fiona and Shrek the Musical. That was fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna say she has a good voice because she does, but um, I don't know. It didn't really stick out. Just talked about Roger Rules and Fragley song. Sorry, I just skipped a few. Okay, then Dear Diary. Dear Diary, I can't really remember. Um, but it, he just like writing to his diary. The fight. It was. I feel like it was. I remember it being pretty short and not that memorable. Um, but yeah, they're they're fighting. Bradley and Greg. I'm pretty sure in this. Um, this is the first time that in on um, the fight is the first time they get exposure to the high schoolers. I don't think there's like a Halloween sequence or anything where they like they accidentally um, vandalize one of the high schoolers' car or anything like like what happened in the movie. So yeah. Um, and then at the very end of the middle of it all, there's some a cappella, and that was that was cool. And those are all my notes. Um, I'm glad I listened to it. It was fun. I I think it was better than I expected, but still not like I don't know spectacular. It's not one of my new favorite musicals, but um, it wasn't bad either. If you have nothing else to do, go for it. I'd say. But yeah, um, this was something a little different. I love whenever I can incorporate music to this into this channel. So yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.